So in our previous examples, when we used the repeat block, we had it repeat a certain number of times. So for example, when we drew a square, we used repeat four, had it move and turn left by 90 degrees, and we just repeated that process four times. There's another really helpful repeat block. Under control, you can see it here, repeat until. And what it allows you to do is go until a particular condition is met. So rather than simply repeating a certain number of times, we don't necessarily know off the start how many times this will occur. So here's a simple example of how we could determine how this works. Let's make a new variable. I'll just call it x for convenience sake. And what we're going to do off the bat is we'll tie this to when we press the flag, we will say let's set x to be 0, for example. And now we want to repeat until some condition is met. The conditions we can often find in the operators area. In this case, I'm just going to say repeat until our x variable, drag in from there, is greater than 10. And inside that, I'll put in if statement. And in fact, I'll use an if else. And let's say that if our x value right here is going to be less than, so I'll grab this and put it into my if statement. So if x is less than 7, let's go back to our variables here and let's just change x by 3 if it's less than 7. And under the else, uh, let's do it slightly differently. Let's say we set x to be, and I'll grab an operator here and use the addition. And let's say that we want it to be whatever x used to be plus 1. Now as we trace this through, and when I say trace, what I mean is we want to try to imagine what is the value of x here at the end of each iteration. Now iteration simply means one time through the loop. So uh, at the zeroth iteration, in other words, before it, any loop has occurred, we set our x value to be 0. So at the zeroth iteration, our x value is 0. And to make this easy on ourselves, let's go to looks here, and we will use the say block, and I'll just drag in the variable x, and we will say the value of the variable at the end of each repeat. And let's make that a little bigger so it's easier to see. Uh, and if I click on this, hopefully we can see beforehand that what's going to happen is we start at 0 for x, then as I go into this, I say repeat until x is greater than 10. Well, 0 is not greater than 10, so we will go in at least once. Then if x is less than 7, since x is 0, it is less than 7. So that means we're going to change x by 3. This else will not occur because it's tied to the if. So since what we did in the if is going to happen, the else will not. So that means that at the end of the first one, we should say that the value will be 3. And let's double check that that's the case. So we click it and we see a three, great. Now let's figure out what's gonna happen next. So after it's a three, we this symbol right here means jump straight back up to the top of the loop and check to see if this loop is now complete. So here, if x is greater than 10, well, x was three, so that means it's not greater than 10. So we will do this again. Is 3 less than 7? It is, so that means let's change by 3. So after the 3, the next thing that I should see is a 6, because once again, we'll skip the else. So let's run that. So I get 3, then 6. Great. So now that it's a 6, we jump back up to do the test. Is 6 greater than 10? It is not. So we go in once more. Is 6 less than 7? Yes, it is. So that means we change x by 3 again. So that means we're going to add 3 more to 6, so we'll be at 9. The else will be skipped. So now we should say 9. So it should say 3, 6, 9. So let's test it. 3, 6, and 9. Great. So, so far, so good. Now when I get to 9, I should jump back up. Is 9 greater than 10? Nope. Is 9 less than 7? It is not. That means now I'm going to do the else. Now here, what this is saying is we want to set the x value, our variable, to be whatever it used to be plus 1. So in this situation, it used to be 9. So that means I'll add 1 to that, and I should be at 10. So if we run this, we should see 3, 6, 9, and finally 10. Great. I'll stop that again. Now 
When we get to 10, now we jump back up to the test and we say repeat until, and this will be 10 is greater than 10. Well, 10 is obviously not greater than 10, it's equal to. So then we jump inside and say if 10 is less than 7, it's not. So we go to the else. And once again, we set x to be whatever it used to be, plus 1. In this case, 10 plus 1. So we should be at 11. Then we should say that it's 11. Jump back up to the top. Repeat until 11 is greater than 10. Ah, 11 is greater than 10. So 11 should be the last value. So when we hit the flag, we can see we'll get 3, 6, 9, 10. And we should end with 11. And it's done. So now that we understand how repeat until works with a simple variable, uh, let's see if we can create an example that's a little bit more useful. So here's a brand new sketch, and I'm just going to put the cat down in the corner here, and I'm going to paint a brand new sprite. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make a cannonball that starts on the left-hand side of the screen and just comes across the screen and comes down over here somewhere. We might not hit the cat, but we'll come over that way in, in any case. Now, to do that, the first thing I need to do is create a cannonball. So I'm going to paint a new sprite. And I'm going to click on convert to vector here to make it look a little bit nicer. I will click on the ellipse. I'm holding down shift so that I can make a circle nice and easy. And then I'll use the paint bucket here and make it black. Okay. Now that looks a little bit large to me, so I'm going to click on the select button, hold down shift, and just make it a little bit smaller. There we go. That looks more like a cannonball. Now, there is a really common problem that can happen that isn't to do with your coding, but rather to do with the costume that you've just made. So you need to set the center of that costume to be the center of the cannonball. And to do that, I'm just going to click on this set costume center. So right now, it's completely off the cannonball. So I'm just going to click and drag and let go when it's right in the middle. So now we've got our uh, cannonball all set up. I'll drag it over here into the corner. And what we want to do, as I said, is just have it move in kind of a parabolic motion like that. So a simple way to do that is going to be create a variable. So I'm going to make a variable called x speed and another variable called y speed. And we're going to use those just to make this thing move. So right off the bat, let's say that we set this up for when the space key is pressed. And what we want to do is first make the cannonball go back to its original location. So under motion, I'm just going to tell it to go to this location that I'm at right now. And then we want to set up some speeds for X and Y. So for example, let's just pick some speeds to attempt. So we'll do this set twice and I'll start with the X speed. So we want it to move left to right. Since this is a Cartesian plane, that means we want the X value to increase. So let's pick a number and say three. And we can adjust this later, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but we'll just say three. And then for the Y speed, we want it to begin by moving upward, which also means I want to add some values. So let's just say that is a three as well. And now what I really want to do is I want this cannonball to keep on moving until eventually it touches the ground or gets close to it. And if you look at these values right here, the X and Y values, you can see that my Y value, when I, my cursor is right here at the bottom, is about negative 180. So really, I want this thing to keep on going until the Y value is less than negative 180. So to do that, we're going to go to Control. I'm going to grab the Repeat Until block. And I'm going to say, let's repeat until, and I'll grab a less than operator, and we'll say repeat until, and this time it's not the speed that we want, so it can't actually be these variables that we made. There's a built-in variable under motion, if you scroll to the bottom, that gives us the Y position. So we want to ask, is the Y position of this sprite less than negative 180? And we just want to repeat until that happens. Now, what exactly do we want to have change? Well, we want to change its X and Y position over and over until eventually this occurs. So let's try that. So under motion, we're just going to say, let's change X by some amount and change Y by some amount. Now, we don't want it to be uh, hard-coded 10. We want to put in our variables that we made. So let's go back to data and change the X speed uh, rather put in the X speed for my change and put in the Y speed for how much I change Y by. Now if I press the space key right now, 
what's going to happen is it just continues to move in a linear motion right up to the top of my stage there. And the reason that happened is that although we probably want our horizontal motion to have the same speed at all times, we want the vertical to begin by moving up, but then we want it to slowly come back down. So in order to have that happen, we need to change what the Y speed is as this program runs. So let's add in one more little bit here, and we will say, not only do I want to change X and Y, but I also want to change the Y speed. So let's say we change it, and we want to decrease it so that it moves downward, and we can pick a value. So let's say we changed it by uh, something that probably will look silly off the bat, but like let's say negative one. And if we press the space bar, ah, so it plops down pretty much instantaneously there. So negative one's a little much. Let's go negative 0.1 and see what that looks like. Okay, good. So now we have parabolic motion. You can see the values occurring up here. Now that might be a little far. The, the ball is kind of sinking into the ground right now. So if you want, you can change this value to be maybe, I don't know, negative 160 or something instead. We can see how that looks. Pretty close. Uh, if you want, you can adjust that to your heart's content until it looks just right to you. <clears throat> Great. And we have a ball now that's moving in parabolic motion and stopping. And again, the important thing to remember here is that we are just using a repeat and tell because we don't know in advance how many times we want these things to occur. And I can easily change these values. So I could say, let's shoot it higher, faster at the start. So it goes a little higher first and then works its way down. Or I could change its X speed as well. And we can alter those values and everything else should work just fine. It should still be able to shoot.